create some immediate prints. So I'm just kind of getting some blues going here. You have to let me know in the chat if you can see and hear everything okay. One of the things that happened last time we went live was our paint kind of dried. So I'm going to go super quick for this first one because I just want to get like all these cool little shapes. And we're going to do a lot of a lot of different textures today. Hey, hey, everybody, as you're all kind of popping in here. Totally curious if you're crafting along today. I'm excited to try out some new things along with some oldies but goodies. And I'm just kind of reaching for several different shaped leaves. Whenever I do this, I always want to kind of have them positioned in different different ways and different sizes so that, you know, I kind of get a little bit of variety and it's okay for them to kind of go off too. And I'm gonna come in here, I should have pulled a print. I didn't mean to do this without pulling the print first, but I just wanna pull up a lot of this like negative space so that we just have the leaves left like this one. And you have to tell me if everything is looking good today. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Karen. Dawn. Tiffany. Yes, I love the leaves too. One of my favorite things to print with. You really can use anything. And that's kind of one of the things that I'd love for you to, and you to kind of recognize today. Now, I'm going in here because I want to remove a lot of this. I want really want just the shape of the leaves. I don't want a lot of like excess blue. And I used a couple colors to just kind of blend those colors together rather than just having one. I'm just kind of looking to just, this is just me preparing the print. All right. I think I got it good. I think I have most of it up here. Hello. There we go. That's some here I need to pull up. That's what's kind of nice about doing this slowly is you can kind of just check, pop that back down, should you feel you need to be able to pull something else up. Excellent. Now at this point, I am going to remove the leaves. Um, actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and take a secondary plate really quick. And let's use kind of like a contrasting color here, something that um, adds something cool to it. Orange is a compliment, but, oh, Christina, Santa Cruz. My family used to have a cabin in Boulder Creek. I love that area. Being, of course, from San Francisco originally. I used to love going there. Now, I'm going to take something like we did last time. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do something different. I've got this really beautiful, I don't remember. What's this, raffia? I think it's raffia. Um, and let's, I should, probably should, should have done this with... Uh, while there was a lot of paint on there, but let's just kind of add something different, right? A different texture. And the reason that I'm doing it this way with the leaves down is I'd like to be able to add this as if it's like coming from behind. So this way we have it on either side here. There we go. Uh, this is kind of fun. And I love, I'm honestly just experimenting at this point. I have planned for a few things that I want to do, but I also just kind of want this to feel kind of just a, like a very organic session. If I were just at, just playing, you know, without the camera on, of course, and without all my friends here talking to me, <laughs> this is kind of what I would be doing. I would just be experimenting. So adding like a little bit of contrast there, let's also take some other shapes that we have here. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to take something and just kind of press it. Oh, I know. Okay. So I have this like little bin. I just kind of threw some different things that I grabbed from around the house. Um, I went into the garage and just kind of grabbed some little tools just to kind of add something interesting. You know, who says it always just has to be like one or two shapes, you know, get a little experimental. 
and have some fun. I was really trying to find like a hex washer and I couldn't, but I've got like this piece of cardboard. Don't know if it was on the flip side of a, now that would actually be kind of like a cool little print, wouldn't it? But okay, getting distracted. Squirrel. Whatever happened to y'all? All right. Let's add some lines. I love lines. So, <clears throat> and the thing that's really cool about, about working like this, I need a little bit more paint down. And I think, you know what? Maybe I'll add, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe I'll add some orange. Uh, let's just pull that up really quick. Need a piece of scrap paper. I always have paper all around me. So I have copy paper around me. I have deli paper around me. I have um, Nina Exact, which is the paper that I pull prints from when I want it on like a cardstock as well. Uh, sometimes I'll have mixed media paper around me and I just want to kind of pull up whatever's there. And if you have something that's already like an existing print, it's always a cool thing to do too, to see if you can add like some grunge to it. That's why I love using multiple plates. See, look, we just kind of grunged that up. I couldn't do that if I tried. So I just do little things like this. I'd love to know if the stream is coming out a little clearer. It's been quite the saga, quite honestly. <laughs> Tech has not been my friend. Karen and Tiffany and Laura have been helping me to really kind of test different things out, try different things. Tiffany's husband's a networking engineer and uh, he's been helping me out a lot, just trying to troubleshoot different things. Uh, Part of the thing is I've actually, I've upgraded my camera, right? I have, <laughs> I have gotten all new cables over the course of weeks. And every time I get something new, I try a new live stream out. And it's been really frustrating because the things that should be working aren't working. And so I've even upgraded my internet plan to like one gig, which is a lot. The only thing that I don't have is fiber at this point. Um, which is just like crazy expensive. So I've upgraded my plan. I've done all these things. And then when we tested it last night, it was still a little fuzzy, which was just beyond frustrating because I have a good computer. So that's the only thing left. And that's like a really expensive thing to replace. So this has been my saga, the things that we do to go live. So now I'm just gonna take these leaves off and it doesn't look like much, but I promise you, once you add like the white behind it and pull things up or other colors, it's going to look amazing. So now I've got some interest, some contrast, some different things there. Um, I think I might add a little bit of this, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first add the neutral. I got to let this dry and then I add the neutral. And then from there, then we'll remove some. And this is just me just warming up. So I know this is kind of like where we left off the last time that we were doing this together. So I'm curious, has anybody been printing with things that they found around their house or gone and scoured their house? Tell me in the comments, tell me in the chat. I'd love to know. Do you look at your garbage a little differently? Ooh, look at that pulling up, that looks amazing. I love that. That is very cool. Very cool. And now I'm going to leave this here because this is good pay it forward texture. Okay. I'm actually really excited to pull this. I'm feeling very masculine colors and blue and orange to me are just kind of the quintessential masculine colors. So I already have some here, which is fun. And then we're going to start to experiment with some different mediums as well today. I did want to, while this is kind of drying, I wanted to kind of show you where we ended last time because I kept playing a little bit and I had like this entire plate was um, filled with just like dried paint. Um, and so what I did was I actually uh, used a stencil down and I started to pull up 
some of the paint. I had added another layer and started to pull up some of the paint and then added a couple colors behind. And then this is gonna be a really cool like side to an art journal. I've already kind of earmarked that for something. Here's some more little textures. I love this one. This was um, a bag for like, I wanna say onions maybe. But I love how, it, as the more I handle it, the more frayed it gets. And I wanted to kind of play with this a little today. And it kind of reminds me of cheesecloth and see what kind of um, pattern we can get from that. Maybe I'll actually do that before we pull the next one. This was just the leftover after having removed some of the blue from a different print that was here and then just adding some different colors. This was just me just goofing off. And this would be an amazing background a sentiment like hello or something like that. This was just pulling the, neg the negative stuff. And then you can see this was one that we had worked on last time and we're gonna turn some this into something um, in a future a live stream this week. And then this is my brayer off paper. I was just really kind of drawn to this. So sometimes these are like your total C prints uh, from my ABC system. And you can create some really cool backgrounds. Now, I don't know if you've seen the video where um, I have like a Christmas tree cut out. So let's say you have like the, um, the shape cut out and you're left with like the stencil and you just have this in the background. How cool is that? That's where you can utilize some of those scraps really easily. Uh, and then uh, just some of the, this, these feel so nice. They're not sealed in any way, but these are the prints that we did with the Distress Oxides. Um, and I'm really kind of digging some of the grunge that we had going on there. Still have to work on filling some of the other pieces. So a lot of fun, a lot of really cool art that we created. Um, I love it. So it doesn't sound like any of you are actually crafting. I would love to know what you're doing. Let's go ahead and take some prints and then play with other stuff. All right. Thanks, Karen. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a print in white here but I'm thinking of possibly playing with a different medium and this one at the same time. Because this one is 100% dry. I did this the other day and I just kind of left it because I knew that I was going to be doing this today. So I wanted to, since this one is freshly drying, I, I would probably, before adding like a wet medium to it, I would probably want to let it dry a little bit longer. So you can see here, I've got a little too much paint here because I've got those funky little wrinkles. And I think that's okay right now because I'm gonna, the goal right here with this particular layer is to actually um, get some texture down first. So let's go ahead and pull some things up here, add some different things before uh, adding paper to it because if I had an even lighter text uh, layer of paint then nothing would come up so I've got this really cool texture here let's uh, let's get that kind of pressed in a little tiny bit more Ooh, I'm really liking what this is doing oh that's cool I got to do that again that's a really neat kind of look, isn't it? It's the first time I'm using this. I just saw it earlier in my stash and I was like, ooh, that would look really cool. So I'm just kind of pressing this in. I kind of smeared it a little bit. Let's see if we can't get that fixed a little, that smear, just kind of pressing this on top. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and add a sheet of cardstock. Well, I think I'm going to use jelly paper instead of cardstock. All right. I want this to really adhere, so I'm going to take my time in getting it down so that we don't get too many wrinkles. I'm really loving this texture. That was really cool. One of the things is when you're doing this live, just like for you, hi there from the Netherlands. Um, 
trained her husband not to throw anything. Says Enika says, I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Forgive me if I'm not. That she's trained her husband to not throw anything away before checking with her. Yeah, Michael won't allow that to happen. <laughs> I think when I'm going live, sometimes I'm talking an awful lot. And I, a lot of times the paint dries. So you have to kind of learn where that balance is to what's really needs to be a little bit more fluid in order to really pull the print. Especially when you have like dry layers underneath, this is something that you want to kind of be cognizant of. So I'm just going to flip this around so you can see what it is that we're going to be pulling up. Okay. Now it's going to be white. It's not going to be like um, neutral colored. If I had used, that's just my, my uh, plate is starting to get a little um, stain, which happens over time. There are other neutrals that you can use. I'm trying to see if I can easily find one. Here we go. Like Titan Buff Light will give you kind of like that little bit of light oatmeal kind of color, um, which is also very pretty, but it's a different look and it would go really well with these. Now this is the raffia that we had used and I love those lines because they kind of have that um, texture to them. And here's the top of the screw bit that we used. Or actually it was a wall anchor was what it was. And that just kind of gives you like a very geometric shape, that plus sign in the middle, which is awesome. I love that kind of stuff. The Starbucks um, liner, just using that pop of complementary orange to the blue. And notice that there's not an overwhelming sense of color on this. So I think that for a masculine card, if we can get, or even a coaster, this would actually make a really nice coaster when you're really looking at it. Um, or maybe even art, you know, when you have that really beautiful print of that leaf and then you have something else with it, uh, there's, you know, it allows it to really shine. Whereas if I had all sorts of stuff and lots of color with this, the leaves may not really stand out because right here, the leaves to me are the art. And that is really using nature and using something that was really meant to be cast aside in a new way and breathing new life into it. And that's just kind of how I approach my art a little bit. You can see I was talking and um, I can already tell you right here that that dried. So that's not going to pull up. So that's that kind of thing that you want to be cognizant of that I started off saying is how wet is it? And when it's too wet and you're using things like deli paper too, um, you'll start to get a little bit of some wrinkles. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It gives you actually a very cool kind of look. So let me just bring this piece in and you can see we have that kind of interesting texture that that creates. And that also adds further interest to other pieces. I actually kind of like that look. So while this is drying, because it's going to take a little bit of time, let's go ahead and do something to this one. I think that I want to play a little bit. I wasn't going to really work with the magicals until to the end. And I have no idea how they're going to work. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. Let's start with mixing it with a couple different mediums. And we'll do it maybe on the plate bit by bit. So let's start with paint. All right. Um, I should only because we're live. Normally, if it was just me sitting here, I'd probably just use my um, plate directly. But let's go ahead and use this to do a little mixing. And let's see what we can do here. Now, Magicals, um, honestly, Karen, Karen Tamir, who's in the chat, she uh, enabled me a year ago with a couple sets of Magicals. And I've had two sets plus, uh, let's see, this one, which is not in a set, I think, Bayou Boogie Gold. And nope, not that one. And Wild Rose Rouge, maybe? No, Black, Black Hole black. I don't know. A couple of these. Oh, here it is. Glitzy gleaming gold. Those were the two that weren't really in a set or if they were in a set, I wasn't going to buy the set. So I was able to buy these individually at lindysgang.com. Now, and I'll link all this afterward uh, in the description below. The thing that's really cool about these is they're pigments and uh, there are a lot of them that uh, also are very glittery, uh, but they're super, super concentrated in color. I have since uh, watching Karen do a live the other day 
Uh, and Lindy's had a bunch on sale. So I, of course, yeah. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate you kind of enabling me. But <laughs> that was the other day. <laughs> this whole title was about going into my stash, right? So I actually have had, let's see here, which I think Autumn Leaves. No, not that one. I think it was these two, Autumn Leaves and Enchanted Forest. I had these in my stash for over a year. So I finally popped them open and I'm excited to kind of um, dip into this a little bit. So let's see what colors we have. Uh, because I put a poll in here just to kind of see where you all are at, whether or not you uh, use what you have. And yeah, there's not a single one of you who selected I rock by and use just what I need. <laughs> Cause we all, we all hoard in some way. So how about if we do the Ponderosa Pines Olive? maybe a little bit of this sparkling sunset or the Bordeaux. Not quite sure. Let's let's start with the olive. So they pop open and by the way, how cool would this be? And it's got a handle so you won't even get your fingers dirty. Making awesome shapes. Totally keeping all of those because chances are I'm not going to be keeping these in the little initial initial kits here. I of course have plenty of these now because I love pigments. There's so many cool things that you can do with pigments. Um, and I'll have to do another live where I'm doing some textured based things like on cardstock with uh, mediums and stuff. Cause that's my one of my favorite ways to use pigments. So I have some of this, let's see here, Ponderosa Pines Olive. And look at all that goodness that's on there, right? You can always use that up. But let's go ahead and I've got a little bit of a different color on here and I don't want to mix these colors. So when I was taking my little thumbnail, I'm just going to take a little bit here and I'm going to add it to my paint and let's see if we can't tint the paint in some way. All right? I'm just going to grab a palette knife and we'll just just one way to pop. Wow, that's got some nice color to it. I am 100% experimenting here. This is all new for me. Now look at this is what I love about pigments. In a lot of ways, they have multiple colors that create them. So if you don't over mix, you can kind of get some of that streaky color, which is kind of cool. But we're going to actually use this on our plate. It's a light green. So this will be interesting. And it has that beautiful blue. Oh, I love that the Australians are waking up and doing this. This is amazing. Good morning to everybody from down under. And let's just kind of, oh, look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, this is really exciting. <laughs> I'm loving this. What amazing color. Okay, I really need to like close that edge. Now I want to create some more texture here before. So let's let's do the signature egg carton, the egg carton press, right? And here. And let's add a little bit, just a little bit of bubble wrap for some more interest in color. And let's grab a big bubble wrap because I love that. Um, and then we'll have to add something else from the front because I need to pull this before it's too late. So let's grab some cardstock on this one. Come on, Ingrid. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I don't want this to dry. That color is too pretty. Haven't gone to sleep yet. <laughs> too funny. So everybody, I just want you to kind of know that Karen Tamir, Tiffany Solario, and I are doing back-to-back-to-back -back -back lives. So get ready. Of course, they're available on replay for any of us, but my live at the end is going to redirect directly into Tiffany's live. So you don't even have to go anywhere. You can just pick it right back up, which will be nice. It'll just, YouTube will automatically move you. How cool is that? I love it. I'm so happy that I'm on vacation. I get to do some lives during the day for all of you in other parts of the world, because lately I've had to go really late in the day. I have to tell you, this is really cool. So 
For those of you that are just kind of popping in, we took some white, titanium white paint, and I added some of the Lindy's Magicals to it. And this is really kind of turning into a really cool kind of, it's not mint green. The color itself is, uh, it's called Ponderosa Pines Olive. So just, just for kicks, let's um, see what it looks like, you know, when we add a little bit here. And I've got like this makeup brush here, so I probably took too much, but let me add a little bit of water to that so that we can see what it looks like when you add water to it. So that's what it looks like with water. Um, very, very different. And I'll just pick this up so you can see this better. So here we've got the white paint mixed with it. You can see all the different pigments that it makes. And then once it's activated with water, that's a beautiful shade of green. I don't really know kind of like a mix of jungle and Christmas green kind of a little bit. So I, if I were painting, I would probably pick that stuff up from there. That's a lot of really good powder. Don't want that to go to waste. So I'm just going to pop that back on and close that. And look at this. First time you see, even see me live. Welcome, Evelyn. It's nice to have you here. Um, one of the things that... Uh, I love about pigments is watercolor. So I have a feeling that that's gonna be a nice, subtle, subtle little greenish with all these little fun flecks. So we'll see what that looks like in a second. I need to dab that. I keep using the um, paper towel that I had put aside to use this texture. Isn't that funny? Okay, this feels, remember when you're printing to always feel the back right when you, put your paper down for the first time and then go ahead and touch it to see if it's cool or warm. Right now this is still cool, which is tells me that it's still drying. And that's probably because I used the, um, the deli paper versus cardstock where it would probably dry a little quicker with that. There's a couple things that you can do. It's also, uh, unfortunately it's the summertime, so it's not quite, and it's kind of, it's really early for us, but, it feels a little humid, I gotta be honest, outside and here in North Carolina. So usually that doesn't happen until the end of June and July. So I, I buy these little tiny fans because I don't know about you all. Tell me in the comments too here, if you're catching us on the replay, are you always hot? I buy these little tiny fans and I live with them around my house because Michael's always cold and I am always hot. We are like polar opposite with that. But I found a great use to this with my crafting, <laughs> especially in lives when I need to dry something and it's kind of quiet, but it blows cool air versus a heat tool, which you cannot use on your gel plates. You'll melt them. You don't want to do that. You don't want to damage your gel plate in that way. So just kind of, and this is already working. I can feel this warming up. So this is a great question, Renee. Renee is asking why I'm using deli paper. So I like to use different types of paper for different purposes. I find that for collage, deli paper works phenomenal. You can also use napkins. Oh, I might have to do that. I think I have a napkin. Tissue paper as well, because it becomes really transparent when you use matte medium to adhere it to whatever you're doing. So a lot of times when I'm making um, coasters, I like to do use it with deli paper or in art journaling. I like deli paper way more than cardstock way more than cardstock. And uh, yeah, Karen, and then you can also just fan fanning myself now because it's hot. <laughs> but this works really well. Um, so I definitely encourage you to to try this out. Uh, just I just keep one on your stash, on your desk, and it plugs in and it's rechargeable and it holds a charge a long time. Now this actually dried relatively quickly. This is feeling this is feeling like it's dry. So I'm gonna pull this before the deli paper actually. So you ready? Everybody ready for this? So did that answer that Renee for you? Or do you still have any questions about that? And deli paper for those of you that are in Europe and other parts of the world, it's kind of like the paper that they wrap around um, like a sandwich or french fries. Uh, you can see that some of this was not quite totally dry or it had dried already. And look at that. Oh, this is so pretty. 
And I love that I'm getting pay it forward texture too. Yeah, I probably could left this drying a little bit more. I'm actually fighting the paint. So what's happening right now, this is, I'm really happy that this is happening for you, not for me. For me, um, this is, I should have waited another minute or two. What's happening right now is I'm actually fighting the plate. So when you have that new layer, that, um, that kind of greenish color that we put down, where we tinted our paint with the magicals, um, it, it reactivated the dry layer, which was the leaves, okay? And together those bonded. And now I laid another dry layer on top, sandwiching the driest layer at the bottom, which are the leaves, with the paper, which is the driest on top. All three have to bond together in order for me to be able to lift this up. Whatever surface is the strongest out of the two is going to win, okay? So this was stronger here, meaning my paper was still wet, so it was in a weakened state in those circles, so the paint stayed behind. It was stronger and it won the battle. So right now I'm actually kind of fighting the, the plate a little bit, and in all fairness, I was talking to kind of allow that a little more dry time, because you see, everything's coming up, and that's all it needed was literally that extra 60 seconds. I was just impatient, so I lost the battle at the top part of the plate, but it's not really losing because we pay that forward to the next print. So I have leaf texture along with those circles from the egg carton, and look at that. How cool is that? That is awesome. And this right here will make a very cool um, coaster or anything that I want to make a card. This actually might be a good print to actually uh, send to my dad. Now I'm gonna hold this a little closer so that you can see. Now look at all these little specks. This is because we use the Lindy's to color the paint. And it has all these different colors that make up that green, which is interesting, right? Because red is not something you would traditionally think that would be involved with green because it makes mud. But just the right amount of the red and the blue that it has in there together is making the green color with whatever else they have in there. Because see, there's other little bits of color. There's a little bit of yellowish gold that they have in there that helps make that pigment powder. And that is really cool. So when we mixed it together with the white paint, notice that I had stopped that. You may need to rewind this video and go back and watch when I'm mixing the paint so you can see at what point that I stopped. If I had continued to mix it, it would have all just become one color. I chose to leave it so that it had all this variation within it because I knew that that would be interesting in the actual art. I love the way this turned out. And I love the shape of the leaves. It just has this very organic feel to it. The only thing that for me is a little unfortunate is I didn't wait. So it left a little too much paint behind because I feel like that's overshadowing the leaves a little bit. So I'll probably, before turning this into something, add more texture to it in the form of maybe like some brown or something to help kind of blend the composition a little bit together. But love also the little, um, what are they called? The pack bubble wrap also, very cool. And here's the larger bubble wrap back there. So that was awesome, I love that. Hey Terry, hey little one. All right, I'm feeling like this is closer. I'm just gonna risk it. We're going to go for it, right? Because I want to move on to newer things. Oh, we did. Uh, I feel like some of it had dried prior to, so we're going to leave a lot behind, unfortunately. It is what it is. That's what happens when you're doing stuff live. You end up talking too much. Yep. So, oh, but this is still kind of cool. It's not turning out the way I want, but that's all right. This will actually make some interesting collage because there's a lot of blank space. So you see, I used the fan on this part and I didn't on this part. Lesson learned here, right? But I have some cool texture to pay it forward for the next one. Um, this is this right here will make a very, very pretty project. So that's a win for me because that was the best leaf out of the bunch. Um, and then up here, this is interesting. When you have kind of these grungy things, what I like to do is I like to take like a die cut and then collage this onto there and really kind of um, explore from that point forward. So that's kind of cool. And I love this pattern right here. See the pattern? I don't know if you can tell. Is the camera, 
is it clear for you or is it kind of is it kind of a uh, blurry because on my big screen it's crystal clear but uh i would just love to know just for me because we're still tweaking the tech um between apparently all the experts that I have working on with me to get this right. Um, I can kind of really see that pattern of um, this right here, which is just so beautiful because it almost gives it a crackle look. So you're all gonna need to now go get your, cut your onion bags. I, I, I'm pretty sure this was an onion bag. And then um, just fray the edges. <laughs> with your fingers. Where is Susan Taylor Brown? If you haven't checked out Susan Taylor Brown's channel, she has a really great fiber and junk journaling channel. And she's the queen of fiber. She's making some amazing art. You'll have to, uh, I think she and I are planning on doing a um, collaboration as well. So I'll introduce you to her for sure. <clears throat> Cause she makes some beautiful things. All right. I love that. Time to work. Time to move forward. <sighs> this makes me sad. <laughs> All right, let's use magicals again. Let's see here. It's interesting because we have that cool texture. So I wonder if I can, okay. I have too many thoughts in my head. Let's continue to make some paint um, and let's try some, maybe, maybe even try with gel medium. Let's see here. Maybe I'm gonna use some gel medium and tint it with the magicals a little bit and kind of make my own paint. Now you've seen this in a video before where I have taken, um, let's see if I can do this so that I keep my space clean for right now. It's like so unprecedented for me to not work directly on my, on my actual platform here. Let's go ahead and take some of this and let's take some. Now, if you get one of these and you can't get the top off, you just have to keep working at it. It took me a little bit with a couple of these. They were on so tight. Let's take some dragonfly. These are great names. Dragonfly denim and some toadstool taupe and some gnome berry bordeaux. Sparkling sunset sounds nice. And fairy garden green. Let's take those three colors. And I think like to try creating, making some of my own paint here. The thing that's going to be different between the ultra matte gel and not the gesso, but um, titanium white is this is going to have a little bit more of an opaque look. So it's going to kind of water the color down a little bit, whereas this is going to dry clear. So let's try the gnome berry Bordeaux here. It's an interesting color. Terry Karen's live is going to also be posted later. She'll be after Tiffany, so you can 100% watch that. And I'll link all the lives also in my description so that you can all, for those of you watching the replay, if you want to save them and get to them as you can, you can. That's interesting. It's not really, it's kind of more brownish, isn't it? Ooh, look at that variation on that. That's pretty. Okay, I think on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because here I am mixing this and I like don't have a plan here. Come on, think Ingrid, think. All right, is this you when you're crafting? All right, we need to have something down first. Let's see. Let's see. I'm open to suggestions from the chat for sure. Stencil, color. Hmm, I think maybe let's create, let's, let's use a stencil down. I know this isn't something that, I know this is something I bought, but I need to have something like this and then we'll embellish with it. Okay. Now I'm being careful because this obviously is a knife, right? So I'm just trying to kind of create my own paint. I don't necessarily have a plan. I am 100% experimenting. I don't know how, if how this is going to work. This is gel medium. 
that I'm doing. I love the variation that I have with that. It's really fascinating. The only thing I don't want is I don't want it to like glue stuff down. That would not be good. So we're just gonna, I think, just leave that there. Oh, that is pretty, right? It's got texture. It's got a little bit of height. I probably should have done that like more on a card. But I think what I'm going to do is I want to then add white behind it um, and then or maybe a gold or something and then pull that up. So I'm going to actually reverse this. Let me I mean, I'm just kind of thinking this through as I'm going live here. I just want to clean this off really quick. Since that's gel medium. A good way to clean stencils and things if you want to. Um, you can have a bin that's wet. You can always do that like underneath you, but then it's kind of wet until you dry it. You can also um, try like hand sanitizer is a great way. It pulls off a lot of stuff, especially paint that's dry. Uh, as well as I'm sure there's a ton of other products. What other products do you all use? Let it, let me know in the chat or the replay if you're watching or the um, comments if you're watching the replay. I'd love to know um, what kind of secrets you have for cleaning things. This is really kind of cool. I'm gonna go with a different color here on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of shadow, I think kind of the same. Now let's have some different flowers here. So it's going to be okay to have like that little bit of space in between because that'll be some uh, just like some difference, some contrast. So now, ooh, turquoise. That's a great idea, Karen. I will have to try that. Okay, let's go ahead and try the denim. You know what? If we're going to do turquoise, then I think I'm going to do the toadstool taupe. Hmm too many choices you know what I think I'm gonna do this instead sparkling sunset let's do that opposite that and then with do you find that Terry's saying that she soaks hers for a short time do you find that that actually um, gets everything up or do you feel like it still leaves things on all right so I need a little time oh and I did this was a mistake I um, didn't make sure that this was clean. It had some pigment on it. And so I got a little bit of a little bit of pigment in here. So I need to take a different clean tool and just pick out those little spots so that I don't color my entire gel medium. That would kind of not be good. It's funny, when I first started printing, I used to clean everything every single time. And I found that I was spending all my time cleaning and it was really frustrating. So I, uh, I just kind of stopped. <laughs> I stopped cleaning at some point. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and just add that to there. So I've got some nice amount of color. The thing that's nice about this is you get to control how much color you put down. Now, if you, I would start a little bit more on the lighter side. And then if you uh, feel like you want to punch that up a little bit, then go ahead and add some more. I still kind of have a little bit of the burgundy on here and I'm okay with that. I'm okay if I get, oh, that's pretty. This will be very pretty with turquoise behind it. I was trying to choose something. Once Karen told, told me, oh, look at the different variation this. How cool is that? It's got like green and all sorts of other stuff. I just want to make sure that I'm actually mixing all the pigment. I want to have some of that variation. So let's add this. Very pretty. Very pretty. Loving this. Just kind of fun. This is kind of like me tapping into some of my card making skills you know, with different techniques and things that I love to do with pigments. I've done this a lot with color bursts. Who here all has color bursts? Remember those? Haven't really seen a lot of people using those lately. Um, or some of the Ken Oliver. Uh, oh, no, those aren't color bursts. 
or like the brushos. I love brusho. Brusho makes some beautiful pigments as well. Those are kind of those things that we all have that are kind of collecting dust, right? Now with gel medium, one of the videos, and I'll link it in the description afterward as well, I've done this with gelatos a few times, and it's a great way to color gel medium so that you get something that's kind of got a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest to it. And you can also then, um, oh, there we go, make your own kind of paint. And that's kind of what I did here as I just made my own paint with these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and hello. Debbie's J. Nice to see you. So that's kind of cool. I'm liking the two different, uh, the two different color. Oh, I just touched that. Don't touch that. That's going to need to dry. So we'll move on to something else before adding some paint and pulling that up. That is looking very, very cool. I'm really loving this color. This is great. This is a different color. I'm not quite sure. I expected it to be a little more burgundy-ish versus it feels a little brown on the browner side. So I, it was unexpected. I'm gonna put this to the side and hopefully this will dry in time. We still have quite a bit of time, so I think it will. Maybe we'll have to hit it with our trusty little, trusty little fan here, which is just very, very handy for stuff like that. Perfect pearls, wow, you're really taking me back here. Perfect pearls, you wanna know how far, oh no, I'm thinking, Perfect pearls are great. I'm also thinking rainbow pearls, which were uh, kind of like a little bit of a liquid form, I think, or were perfect pearls liquid? Remember Pearl X too? Pearl X was another one. They were going way back in old Stampin' Up! days. We used to have that, um, a lot of artistic supplies in the catalog. This is back when I was a demonstrator. And I used to do a ton with that kind of stuff. This is like pre pre 2000. So like late 90s, late, late 90s. Love all that stuff. Okay. So I'm going to just quickly spritz this. Yeah, because otherwise anything that I lay it on, those pigments are going to come off is what I'm thinking. So I'm going to move my plate kind of off to the side here, and let that dry. And then I'm going to go back to our other plate, which we have some of the paid forward texture from the print earlier. And maybe we'll try something different. This is kind of fun. Little spray bottles are incredibly, incredibly handy. I have to say I have tried several different kinds of spray bottles over the years. And uh, like I have some ones by Tonic that are sitting on my my desk. They broke, you know, I, they came in a two pack. I thought I was getting a great deal and I, I did. But this old one has really worn the test of time and uh, it still works. So I love this spray bottle by Ranger. I love the different um, that you can get big drops and small drops with it. Uh, it's probably one of my uh, favorite features of it. I'm gonna just give this a quick little spritz cause I don't want all that gel medium to dry on this. Cause then it gets a little hard and it makes it, you want it to be clean. And plus we have a lot of pigments on that as well. All right, let's move on to something else. I'm really loving all of this, all of these, um, Lindy's colors, really kind of cool. So I'm gonna toss that and we'll take another print. All right, so I've got this kind of cool texture that we paid forward um, from some of the, there were leaves that were on there that were a little left behind and the egg carton left some of that paint behind as well. So let's just take some colorful prints. I'm just kind of in the mood to just create stuff. And uh, I was kind of toying with the idea of using the Lindy's with um, water, but I just, you know, I just don't think it's gonna turn out. Let me try it on a small scale. Whenever I am unsure about something, cause that's, that's the beauty of these, right? is, um, okay, so let's try this one. Autumn Maple Crimson. Sounds like I need to have a pie of some sort. Um, Autumn Maple Crimson. That sounds really pretty. Uh, let's try it with some 
with some water here. I'm excited because Tiffany has like this awesome PDF on what to do with these. She has all sorts of different techniques and things like that. She's also teaching another class next month on these. That's I think free. And um, let's just go ahead and, ooh, gotta be careful because I don't want it to blow off, obviously. Um, and let's just kind of brayer it out and see, see, because water and gel plates don't really work and I have too much water down. So let's, uh, let's see here. How can I use something that's wet in a cool way? Yeah, it's still going to bubble up. Let's use paper towel and see if we can't get a print in some way. I don't think it's really going to do anything. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to work. But now I have some red on here. So let's see what happens when we add paint to the mix. I'm curious. Ooh, okay, now we're getting something really cool because they're not adding like a lot of water because that's the thing is, even though these are all water-based, you don't want to add a lot of water to whatever you're doing. So I've got that on there. Let's add now some texture. It's got this uh, kind of like pinkish hue to it from that. And let's add, let's add some other textures to it. So let's add a leaf. We'll pull that up and let's add some string. This is uh, just some cotton. Oh, I should have opened this before because my paint is literally drying as we're doing this. And we're just gonna take some cotton. This is like uh, that I would use in the kitchen. I bought this to tie like roasts together and stuff. Okay, so that and let's add a little bit more detailing there and i'm going to now lift the rest of the white away leaving the print the colors i'm just going to use a piece of scrap to do that before it dries because i don't want it to dry so kind of in essence pressing in the pattern, but at the same time, I'll be left with the negative or the positive image, which the uh, mask is gonna leave behind. So, here we go. Cool. Okay, so let's lift that up. And now I've got some interesting white. Oh, actually pink, look. Okay, so here's what happened. By using the Lindy's with the water there, so it's here, it's just sitting here. It's not gonna dry because it's water. So it left that variation. You can even see it here with the paint when I rolled the paint, the, the paint over it, which is so fascinating. So it gave it this kind of pinkish hue to the white. So we were able to actually color, and I'll hold this up closer so that you can see it. We were able to actually color um, our paint by mixing it technically on the plate with whatever was left. Unfortunately, I pulled a little too much away, so it's not really how I would recommend doing it, but you know, that's taking lemons and turning it into lemonade, right? So I'm gonna let this dry now as we move to here and play with something else because I don't think this other one is quite dry yet. But I've got some really cool, and I have like, you can see I, I use these five by sevens a lot as palettes, um, you know, like a paint palette. So that's what I was doing with this. So I have to still like clean that side and pull that up. Uh, but let's see how we're doing over here. Let me pull this up. I gotta tell you, this is really cool. I don't think it's fully dry though yet. It still needs, this bottom part is, um, maybe not 100% around there, but we need to let that dry a little bit further. All good, all good, because we have this one to play with. So 
let's move mosey on over here. Oh, and I've got a lot of uh, pigment here, so let's dry that. And I think I've got it on my the reverse side of my plate. All right. <laughs> Love this. I am going to, I think, try and just see what happens. I want to play with a couple of things here. I just want to just kind of, ex I'm in an experimentation kind of phase right now. So I've got, so we've got like, I know this is going to turn pink. So I need to do something that's going to be contrasting. So let's see what we can do here. Let's just add a heart. And I just want to play with a few things. So I know if I were to roll this out, this has that, a lot of that pigment on there. If I were to add white, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, let's try some yellow. I've still got some of that pigment and stuff on there, but I'm curious as to what's going to happen. So maybe what I'll do is I'll go with like a go-to palette of mine that I love. And let's go ahead and combine these colors because I love it when these colors combine. Um, I think I'm going to add some white to the mix. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, it doesn't turn out. What did I use for the heart? Great question. All right. I used, hang on one second. Let me just add a little bit of white there. I have these, um, they're by Marabou um, Art Crayons. So you could also use, uh, I know Distress has some crayons. Dina Wakely, I think, has some crayons. Karn de Osh, I, I recently treated myself. Shh, don't tell Michael. I hope he's not, he can't hear me. But I treated myself <laughs> as a reward to the entire set of these. And I've wanted that literally for five years. So <laughs> I don't treat myself to everything. <laughs> I can't possibly have everything out there. <laughs> and if I have it, I want to make sure that I use it. So I just put an art crayon down. I'm not sure how it's going to work. We'll see. I'm going to go with the lighter colors first and just kind of blend these a little bit. I knew that I had some Lindy's Magical up there. So we'll see how that goes. And you can see that it has a lighter shade of the yellow here. Um, I, I, I was supposed to use turquoise, wasn't I? Um, Oh, that was behind the other one. All right, so let's go ahead and add this to this uh, magenta because that's gonna turn into this beautiful, beautiful kind of like orange-ish color. And we'll add a little up there. Uh, I think I wanna use different colors here. So I'm gonna clean my brayer off to the side. I'm not digging the lines that I created there. So let's go ahead and take some of this away and add a little bit more of the yellow there. Just kind of taking a little bit of a lighter touch to get a little bit of a better blend. And it's kind of, I, I feel like it might've gotten a little muddy, but we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. I do want to pull up a little bit, add a little bit of texture in different ways. So I'm just gonna add like some go-to little things like that. I don't want full on, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to whack y'all. Don't want full on circles everywhere. So I'm just gonna do these at the bottom and maybe just do one complementary line at the top for some interest. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all up um, onto some bard stock. Cardstock? Cardstock. Yeah. This is Nina Exact cardstock, which is what I like to use. It's about 100 pounds. I have it linked in the description. So what papers do you all use? Does anybody here use rice paper when they do printing? Just out of curiosity. And I hope you're all getting excited to watch Tiffany's live. We go with this one. Let's add some while well, the other one is still drying. I'm gonna position my fan over it so that it will dry. Let's go ahead and 
bring this here and I just want to position the fan so that it angles and dries this. Okay, so with this one, we have kind of like a white going on here. Um, I don't think that it has a lot of pink to it. So I think what I'd like to do is show you how I incorporate just a little tiny bit of color when I'm not looking to do a lot. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit of brown here. Okay, I don't wanna add too much. And I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna kind of rare it out just a little bit. Right, and then I'm going to take something that's going to create texture, and I like to use this, and then I go back over it with the actual brayer, and then come back and take some away with my fingers so that it has a little bit more of an organic feel versus so perfectly straight because I don't want it to be perfectly, perfectly straight all the time. So just kind of pull some of that away, some of the perfectness of it, so that it feels a little real. And then we let that quickly dry before, and that's a super, super light, um, super light uh, coating of actual paint. And then I add another color. So to this, I feel like I'm going to Go with some blues. I have blue kind of feel today. Blue and let's do some. No, I already have white. So blue and blue and magenta. Let's see how that looks. We'll probably get some purple on here as well. All right, and we'll just kind of, and I think my, the key for this is to add a little bit more of the blue on the other side, kind of blend those across. Remember we have the white as the top layer, so that's already adding contrast. So that's why it's okay for me to kind of add these darker colors. And I'm gonna clean this, and then I want to be able to pull that up. I have a feeling that that's gonna look really nice collaged. So I'm going to use some deli paper for that. I'm just kind of get a really nice bond here. I didn't have a super thick layer, which was also important. So I just want that to dry as quick as possible. Yes, that's a great idea. Gelatos, good, good idea, Karen. Gelatos might work as well. Okay. I feel like this is dry enough. I probably should let it sit just a little tiny bit longer, but this needs to sit also. And we're going to have all sorts of pulls before being able to go watch Tiffany. All right. Now, I would love to know in the comments, if you're watching the replay or in the chat, uh, what you want to see next. I have one live where I'm going to actually create projects from things that we've been creating all week and probably even a couple that I do off screen. Um, really kind of walking through my process on that, as well as some other type of projects that you can make. Um, I might do alcohol inks on another one because I have a lot of really cool techniques that I've been playing with that I don't think you guys have all really seen yet. And I would love to know what else you're interested in. So turquoise and what else? I need some color help here. I'm not quite sure. I'm feeling very feeling very undecided. Hey, Laura. Laura Volpez, welcome. Okay, so we have kind of like this burgundy-ish kind of color, burgundy-ish brown, and this beautiful sunset color. I've got turquoise down as an option, but I want another, I don't know if I have a copper. That's an interesting choice. 
I do have gold, though. That might be too close, though, to the other one. You know what? Maybe I'll just use white, and we'll go into a lighter. Ooh, green. Okay. Sorry. Totally changed direction here. Green it is. Okay. Green it is. This is going to be interesting. I'm a little curious. Not going to lie. Start with the lighter out of the two. Just kind of start to spread that out. And then let's tap into the turquoise. Oh, the turquoise is going to be gorgeous. Add a little bit of green here so we have a little bit of blend. It's just kind of going right over that. Nothing got smushed, which is great. I should never have said that because that's just like tempting fate, right? Okay, I need a little tiny bit more like true green. A couple too many bottles of paint here. Oh, I don't need that drying this as I'm like trying to <laughs> prayer it out. How sad. Okay. Oh, this is kind of nice. I'm digging this. Now I can already tell that some of it dried. So what I need to do now is I need to pull up a little bit of stuff. So I'm going to take some netting and I'm going to just randomly go over this with my brayer to kind of pull up some interest and pattern. And then I'm going to end up adding white is what I'm going to do. So we're kind of creating texture in random places, which is kind of cool. Loving that. Especially, and I'm kind of really trying to hit the in-between spots, you know, where the negative of the stencil was to kind of create that. Um, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I really hope this pulls up nice because <laughs> this is looking way cool. <laughs> way cool. Okay, this is feeling very tropical, right? And I love how this is actually pulling up some of it. So it has kind of a little bit of an earthy feel where it removed some of it. Let's see if I can do that over here just to balance it out a little. Let it kind of grab and pull some of it with it. Yes, excellent. Okay, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> getting really excited here. Oh, that is just way too cool. Okay, this needs, this needs to be come up as one. This is going to go onto paper. I'm going to put this up on paper because I've got, because I used, uh, we made our own DIY paint with the Magicals and the gel medium. Um, that's a little bit of a sturdier thing. And I don't think the deli paper will win out. I think that's going to be too weak to pull that up. So I'm going to use cardstock on this, but I can tell you that it's going to take a little bit to do another layer. I can add... I can add the white now, but it's going to need to sit for like 20 minutes. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to pull this one another time. I'll either do a short and pull it so that you can all see it like a very, very short video, or um, I'll wait till the next stream, but that's going to be in a couple days. I don't know if I can wait that long. <laughs> this is going to look really cool. Okay. This is dry enough for me to lift. So I just want to show it to you. Look how pretty that is. That is gonna look amazing. That's gonna look amazing. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna add white is what you're gonna add to this. You don't wanna add anything else that's gonna muddy that color up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that because we have a few minutes here. And then I'm gonna pull the other, the other print as well. Now, if you're just arriving and you missed the beginning part of this, because we made our own paint with Magicals, definitely rewind to that part because that was really cool. Also talked a little bit about Magicals. I talked a little, now we're gonna go immediately to Tiffany's stream after this and she's gonna give us a little bit more education on Magicals as well. Um, she and T Karen have been using Magicals for years. Okay, this is not a new product. Lindy's Gang is not a new company. They've been around for a long time. Okay, so I'm going to just plop this down and try to get the best of both because my paper is not as big. This is why I love using a 9 by 11 or 9 by 12 plate, 9 by 12 plate 
because it's big enough that I get a full coat on cardstock. Okay, so I don't have that white that's on the edge that drives me crazy. And then I'm just going to pull up some of this excess with this right here. All right. And then I want to get a really good bond onto, I'm just going to pull a little tiny bit up so that it's not like, oh my gosh. Wow, that's gorgeous. Oh, that's going to look so, so good. Okay, so I'm just going to go over this right now. And you can see that this is even, I'm transferring even wet paint, which is just making this even wetter. But I want a really good bond here. So because remember, the stencil pattern was a little raised and this is on a gel plate. So it's not completely, totally flat. So I just wanna make sure I have a really, really good bond. And I'm gonna let this sit because I'm really excited about this print. I can hear it in my voice, how excited I am about this print. I know that I need to let this sit for at least an hour, if not overnight is probably a good, a good bet. That way when I pull it, I will pull the complete print and clean the entire plate, not leaving anything behind. Um, if you get impatient, you'll end up taking a little bit up from that, and that's okay. That's okay too. So I'm gonna put this to the side, and we're gonna pull still this print. Remember this print? Okay, this is our last one. Oh, I'm excited. I love we got we made a lot of art today. Oh, and it's coming up beautifully. Oh, oh, this is exciting. So if you, we're going to end up going right at two o'clock when I, once I end this stream, we're going to end up popping right into Tiffany's stream and she's going to teach us a lot more about the magicals. Look at all that white gorgeousness right on top of there. A little bit of splatter and it paid a little bit forward. That's because of the deli paper and the nature. It cleaned almost the entire plate. Look at the gorgeous leaf and the beautiful print from the netting that we have. Remember we put some string on there as well. And we also use drywall tape. So lots of different textures. Yes, this is deli paper. Lots of different textures um, to create this gorgeous print. This was just me playing on the leftover plate, remember? Because we had magicals mixed with white. And so this is offering a little bit of contrast, some cool deeper jewel tone colors. Absolutely love this. Let me know in the comments if you're watching the replay, which one was your favorite? We are off to Tiffany's. This was so much fun. Be sure to check out my mailing list because I'm sending out, finally, next week, sending out the information about the free Zoom. So I hope to see you all there. Bye, everybody.